Rio Tinto is one of the world's biggest mining companies. It's also a huge supplier of the steelmaking ingredient iron ore. That makes it perfectly placed to talk about what's happening in China. I'm joined by Jean Sebastian Jacques, who is the chief executive of Rio. Jess, you've just come back from China, I think. Uh, can you give us your impressions about the economy, uh, industry there, the steel industry, SOE reform? Yes, so I've been in China twice in the last four weeks. And if you ask me, am I concerned about the health of the Chinese economy? The answer is no. I'm very confident about 2017. The government is taking a lot of actions. And we shouldn't forget that they have their leadership conference in Q4. And I'm very, very, very confident that they will do whatever it takes in order to make sure that they meet their target ahead of this conference. So am I concerned about 2017? No is the answer. Okay. And are there any themes or, or real trends that are coming across? SOE reform, environmental regulations, is there anything there that you picked up? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, so we had the opportunity in the last nine months to meet twice the, the chair, Chairman Chao, the chairman of SASAC, is the, the gentleman who's in charge of all the non-financial SOE. So it's only 45 to 48 trillion RMB. So if you think that uh, Rio is big, I think this guy is really big. Right. Um, so we had a pretty, pretty open conversation, and we've known this gentleman for a long, long time, about the SOE restructuring. There is no doubt that they are restructuring the SOEs because of environment and pollution. And I think the restructuring of the steel business is way well underway, but that could be a good opportunity for us. Let me give you uh, the rationale. Um, and we had a, a first-hand experience three weeks ago when I did visit some of our uh, customers in Shanghai, where we could see with our own eyes where people are shutting down small blast furnaces and moving the production to larger US blast furnaces. But in order for them to maintain the level of output, what they need is be better quality, better quality of iron ore, for example. Um, and that's where the opportunity sits for us. So and is that, does that explain why the price has held up so well? I think year? there are four key drivers today in the price formation of iron ore. So let me take you through those four. The first one is the health of the Chinese economy. And I said, no real concern yep. at this point in time. And we shouldn't forget that, you know, this whole discussion about five versus six versus seven, it's slightly simplistic and doesn't really matter because even 5% of a large number remains a big demand mm -hmm. from that perspective, okay? So we should acknowledge that the, Chinese, the size, the scale of the Chinese economy today is very, very significant. First driver is the Chinese economy. Am I concerned? The answer is no. The second one is the one we just discussed, which is around the restructuring of the steel business. Restructuring of the steel business doesn't mean that the output will come down. First point, and the second point is it could mean, and it's meaning as we speak, the demand for higher quality raw materials, starting with I know. So no real issue. The third driver is really about additional capacity that is put online by some of the majors either in Australia or in Brazil. I believe it's well documented. Everybody's expecting around 100 million ton of additional capacity in the coming two years. I think it's fully priced. The fourth driver, which is a key source of uncertainty and potentiality, potentially volatility in the marketplace, is the domestic iron ore production in China. A few years ago, three years ago, they did produce slightly more than 400 million tonnes. At this point in time, our best estimate is around 270 million tonnes. It's still winter in China as we're having this conversation, and it's very difficult to forecast what may happen as and when the summer months come. Are they going to restart some of this production or not? Depending on this decision, it could have an impact on the prices for iron ore. Okay, well, one final question from me. Um, I mean, if the iron ore price does hold at these levels for the rest of the year, Rio Tinto is going to be generating a fantastic amount of cash. I mean, you could even end the year with a net cash position. What will you do with that money? Can, share, can you, we expect shareholders to receive some of that? Will you kick it back to them? So let's be clear, the first priority for the team is to make sure that we have lots of cash on the balance sheet. That's the first point. The second point is we have been very clear about our capital allocation framework. You remember we did change our shareholder return last year in January. Um, the way we look at it is we have a very clear view on the capital that we will have to spend in the next five years. And we have given a guidance and we did reconfirm the guidance recently. Five billion dollars this year, five and a half the year after and so on and so forth. That's one aspect. We already have a very strong gearing. We've, we have the best balance sheet across the industry. However, we would like to slightly improve it. And then the rest is for discussion with the board in February next year in relation to shareholder return. We have committed clearly to provide 
superior cash return for shareholders. And if you go back to what we did six weeks ago with our result for 2016, it was a good illustration of it. $3.6 billion of return to our shareholder through dividend and the share buyback. Jean-Sebastien Jacques, thank you very much. Thank you, Neil.